and welcome back to another video huh hope that you're having a nice day today that you remember to look at nature um i did today i was having a look at how water kind of grabs the edge of the gloss like if you play with it it's almost sticky towards the gloss and the gloss was kind of indented with different patterns and i could see the different thicknesses of the gloss where there were patterns definitely has an effect to how the water is grabbing and I was like, why? Is it the heat? Like, what's the reason? But yeah, I was just looking at water. It's very fascinating. So today, we're going to continue working on the theories. Um, I was looking at this. <laughs> I still feel resentment. I, was, I still feel resentment from that other person. And it's like so strange because it's such an awful feeling. It's so heavy, resentment. It definitely is from broken trust like i was looking at this i was like this is so much this is true like i he wasn't telling me something so i didn't have all the information and that kind of hiding <laughs> it hurts people but it also breaks the trust and now now i have issues trust issues um so that's interesting like how do i let go of the resentment i have i don't know I tried to write a song, I tried <clears throat> to just say it, like, oh, I forgive you, like, I'm not resentful, I tried that, don't work, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do, like, I guess I have to figure out, or my thinking right now is that I have to figure out what did I do in that situation, like, it's, it's not just me being, yeah, I guess I was just really desperate. <laughs> so is it my fault too? I don't know. But yeah, we're going to continue working at, on the theories. Um, still dealing with that. Still dealing with that. Uh, just going to check that everything's recording. Okay, everything seems to be good. So we're working on the belief system. We made up a new word. You tremory. I still love it. Uh, one second. Okay. I seem to have some phlegm. So, <laughs> excuse me if I have to pause just to clear my throat. Um, yes, Futremory. <clears throat> That's a big one. A big step forward, I think. Making words. Making words up. That's exciting. So... Let's think about this. Ooh, my table is so wobbly. <laughs> and, then my, and then my phone becomes wobbly. Um, I'll fix it eventually. So, you have receptability. Stimulus, receptability, senses, experience, memory, future memory. <laughs> Pain, pleasure, fear, calm, feeler, mind, beliefs. I was thinking about this. There's something about this. <clears throat> Memory is not all there is to storage. I feel like storage is needed here. Because when you're remembering, when you think of the few tremories, they're still in like your brain, like they're still stored in your brain. And then you've also got okay, memory in terms of um... <clears throat> You have memory in terms of storage of experiences. But then you also have just knowledge, like knowledge about the world. And that's a different kind of recollection. I wanted to look at the neurons. Like what are the different types and what do they do? 
I've been thinking of that a lot. I'm like, why is there different types? I never knew that. Um... <laughs> Where did I put that? It was... here. Oligodendrocytes. What are the stem cells and their purposes? Stem cells are you... Ooh. Oh, wait. No, I meant neural stem cells. Hold on. Neural... <laughs> also known as neurons or nerve cells, are specialized cells in the nervous system responsible for transmitting electrical and chemical signals throughout the body. The nervous system is a complex network of neural cells that includes the brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves. Neural cells serve various purposes in the neuro system and they can be classified into different types based on the structure and function here are some of the key types of neural cells and their purposes neurons nerve cell okay neurons just this is the one everyone knows Gelia. Gelia. Whoa, there's so many. Cerebellum. Okay, I need the brain as well. I'm just going to copy this. Let's go to the brain. Oh, we got the nervous system going. <laughs> Weird, dude. The corpus callosum. Okay. Neurons. Neurons are the primary functional units of the nervous system. They have several important purposes. Transmission of signals. Neurons transmit electrical impulses known as action potentials. Action potentials. Interesting. To communicate information throughout the nervous system. Electrical impulses. Action potentials. I like the naming. <laughs> the medicine's naming is very nice. I like it. To communicate information throughout the nervous system. This allows for sensory perception, motor control, and cognitive processes. Okay. Integration of information. So that's, okay, they transmit singles, signals, the integration of information. Neurons integrate and process information received from other neurons. They can perform complex computations and decision-making decision tasks. Huh. Interesting. Memory formation. Certain neurons play a role in memory formation and storage, allowing for learning and recall informa of information. Recall. Motor control. Motor neurons transmit signals from the brain and spinal cord to muscles and glands, enabling voluntary and, in and involuntary movements and responses. Huh. Transmission of signals, action potentials, integration of information, <laughs> Fe memory formation. 
Hey, formation is in the word information. In. In. What does in mean? Interesting. Certain neurons play a role in memory formation and storage. Motor control. Yeah, yeah. Sensory perceptions. Sensory neurons transmit signals from sensory organs, eyes, ears, and skin to the central nervous system, allowing us to perceive our environment. It's so interesting. And then they've got the, the gray matter and the white matter. Where's that? Oh, I know I put it down somewhere. Ah. Gray matter. Contains most of the brain's neural cell bodies. Look at that. <laughs> Fully develops once a person reaches her 20s. Develops throughout the 20s and peaks in middle age. The white matter. Interprets sensory information from various parts of the body. Hmm. Interpretation. Processing. Hmm. All right, interesting. The the gila, gilia, gileal cells. Gileal cells are support cells that provide various functions to support and protect neurons. Provide nutrients and contribute to the formation and maintenance of the blood-brain barrier. What's that? <laughs> oh, what's that? This sounds very interesting. The blood-brain barrier. I do love alliteration. I want to know what that is. Also, I've stopped drinking coffee again, so I have like some adjusting to do in terms of the way that it affects my perception. The blood vessels that vascularize the central nervous system processes unique properties termed the blood-brain barrier, which allow these vessels to tightly regulate the movement of ions, molecules, and cells between the blood and the brain. Interesting. I want to see a picture. Chat DTP is cool, but it needs pictures. Then it will be the ultimate textbook, and that is going to be crazy. Blood, luminal, vascular, beam. Glia. Microglia. Perivascular macrophage. Endothelial cell. Endothelial cell. Inside. Thelial. Hmm. Astrocytes. 
interneuron. Oh, it's a tight junction. <laughs> I'm gonna be careful. It's a tight junction over there. Yes. Um, okay, great. Let's go back here. Oli Golden Drow Sites. That's what I was wondering about. In the central nervous system and swan cells. Swan cells? Swan. That's in the kidney, I think. Where's that? And what's. Oh no, Bow Bowman's. <laughs> That's where that's from. I never knew which... Where was Schwann? I remember reading that. Hmm. No, I don't know. Can't remember. Peripheral nervous system. These cells produce myelin, a fatty substance that insulates axons, facilitating faster and more efficient transmission of electrical signals. Myelin. That's in the bone marrow. I didn't write it down last time, I remember. Oh no, that was my Lloyd. My Lloyd, not my Lynn. My Lynn. Hmm, interesting. It's what goes around. Oh, insulates. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's got a. A few turtlenecks. It's got fat around it. Crazy. <laughs> what? Whoa, dude. Die my lination. Myelination. Myelination. De my Demyelination. Oh no, he's turtle legs. Was it gonna keep warm? No. Be careful. Don't damage your your myelin. What's this? Oh, he wants the old hands. What's this? Oh. Is this how it is? How it forms? In like a spiral? Myelin sheath. Ob Oligodendrocytes. What's he doing? What's he doing? He trying to repair it? Oh. Astrocytes. Uh-huh. Outer tongue. <laughs> oh, it's like it's you can unwrap it. That's really yucky. Oh, the axon is that line. <gasps> Whoa, dude, look at this. Look, it's busy looking at <laughs> no ways. What do you mean? It's forming it inner tongue, outer tongue, paranodal loop forming. Cytoplasmic channel. No way. And there's, there's. Okay, th what is that? Oligodendrocyte. That's the OE. It's got the tongue. It's got the tongue. It forms 
the myelin 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 <laughs> what they're just floating around insulating things and then the astro sides is busy connecting the circuits that aren't in between the fats it seems it also looks like a neuron but i guess it's different why how what's it doing is that are those things floating around to when we're thinking <laughs> what's going on here this is a whole party going on there's a party going on in here this is crazy dude also this light is incredibly bright um okay i just want to pause so i can like fix the light one second Oh, that's not the puzzle, but okay, that will have to do. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's not as bright, but when the huge light is on me, it's really quite, <laughs> it's really quite annoying. Um, so myelin sheath, that's very interesting. A fatty substance that insulates axons, facilitating faster and more efficient transmission of electrical signals. Axons insulates axons. Axons are the little tail, and then an ax astrocytes. I don't know what that is. Why is it not here? Oh, it's the first one. Help regulate the chemical environment around neurons. Let's put this here. How? Oh. Provide nutrients and contribute to the formation and maintenance of the blood brain barrier. It's feeding it. <laughs> okay. so strange so strange everything is so weird um okay next the micro the microglia the microglia are immune cells of the nervous system that monitor for pathogens and cellular debris and play oh those are your white blood cells myeloid oh that's that's the red <laughs> That's the red blood cells. The microglia. Where are my microglia? I remember reading about them. They must be underneath the white blood cell. Macrophage dendritic cell. The bladelets? The neuro neutrophil. Ozonophil. Erythrocytes. Basophil, lymphocyte, monocyte, microglia, microglia, where was that? Schwann cells, here they are. Schwann cells. <laughs> I remember being like, what? <laughs> oh, the axon, the axon terminals, the nucleus. Cell body, the dendrites. Microgia. I don't have it anywhere. <laughs> it makes me sad. Why? <laughs> what is that? Microglia. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh. Wait a second. No one up there. Microgelia, microgelia, microgelia. The dendritic spines, dendrites. Ah, there it is. Microgelia. Finally, I knew I read it somewhere. Microgelia are immune cells of the nervous system that monitor for pathogens and cellular debris and play a role in the inflammation and repair. The little wiggly face. There is a perivascular macrophage. What's he busy doing? Endidymal cells. In epidymal cells. These cells line the cavities of the brain and spinal cord, producing cerebrospinal fluid, oh, cerebrospinal fluid, which helps cushion and protect the nervous tissue. Oh, don't be nervous. The intraneurons, interneurons. Interneurons are a type of neuron found entirely within the central nervous system. They serve as connectors and relays between sensory neurons and motor neurons. They are crucial for the formation, for information processing and complex reflexes. Interneurons, interneurons. <laughs> Intraneurons. The spinal cord gives me nightmares. <laughs> it's a bit intense. It's a bit intense. Spinal. Oh, there it is. Posterior view of the cerebellum. Dude, look at that. It's so red and blue. The veins. Look at it connecting to itself. The brain is so... Brain. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. No, no. I'm traumatizing myself again. Oh, it's better. The spinal cord. The bone marrow. Neuroforamen. Okay. <clears throat> the in. Oh, wait, we're already on. Where were we here? Oh, into neurons. 
The Purkinji cells. These specialized neurons are found in the cerebellum and play a critical role in coordinating and regulating motor movements and balance. The pyramidal cells. The pyramidal neurons are found in the cerebral cortex and are involved in higher cognitive functions, including thinking, decision making, and voluntary motor control. The pyra, the pyra. Mydal cells. They look like roots. This is a longer thought. <laughs> What's going on? So there is physical. There is physical growth to all of experience that's crazy i wonder what people's because i often say this to people when they like are talking and then they can't get something and i'll complete what they're thinking about and they'll look at me with this like look of astonishment and i'll just say we have the same branches in our minds and this is actual branches though <laughs> like look at it those look like roots. That's crazy. Dopaminergic neurons. Dopaminergic. 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 Dopaminergic neurons. These neurons produce and release dopamine. Oh, we love dopamine in our time. A neurotransmitter involved in mood regulation, reward, and motor control. Dysfunction of these neurons is associated with conditions like Parkinson's disease and schizophrenia. Interesting. Serotonergic neurons. Serotonergic neurons produce serotonin, a neurotransmitter that regulates mood, sleep, and various physiological processes. They are a target for medications used to treat depression and anxiety. The purpose of neural cells collectively is to enable the nervous system to receive, process, and transmit information, allowing for sensory perception, motor control, cognition and the regulation of bodily functions. These cells work together to ensure the proper functioning uh, of the nervous system, the nervous, and play crucial roles in maintaining homeostasis and responding to changes in the external and internal environments. Fascinating. Very fascinating. Um, the reason I wanted to look at that is because... I wanted to see what the neurologists have to say about the different types of memory. Or if there was certain neurons that were associated with different types of memory. Right, but first a break, because that was a lot of information to absorb. <laughs> And yes, I want to make sure that I understand it all, not just move on. Um, so I'll be back now now. Alright, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Oh, yes, who's back? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we were busy on the the storage. So you have an idea of future. So I think I spelled this wrong. Oh, that's fine. Idea of future experience. Always. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Every time. Experience. Like that. Idea of future. Experience. Something my friend said to me, which was so mind-blowing. She was telling me about this one time where she had a traumatic experience that almost ended up in her dying. <laughs> and she, t she said, it's strange because all of my memories are stored in the third person, except for that one. Like that one is in the first person. And when she said that, I like thought back into my mind. I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> she's right. Excuse me. She's right though. Like, um, I do th store memories in the third person. I think of myself in the environment. Like, that's so strange. Why? That's very weird. <laughs> Except for things that were somewhat traumatic. That actually, like, imprinted themselves into my mind. There's a few experiences I had with people where I had, like, one of these, like, experiences where... I, I guess I was traumatized, but... Maybe that's what it is. It's just like, it stores... It's it's not like digestible. It's stored as my raw experience, which is... Probably takes up a lot of space. <laughs> it must like save energy or whatever to store it as a third person. Like, that's so fascinating to me. I was like, wow, she's right. <laughs> Idea of future experience. Um, what would we call this? Memory. Stored. Stored experience. Oh yes, now you have something else. Understanding. We'll call this knowledge. Oops. <clears throat> knowledge tends to be sort of unemotionally charged. Memory can be emotionally charged. Your tremor you can also be emotionally charged. Knowledge, that's just understanding of reality. Oopsie. Hold on. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can put this in? Oh, whoa. I didn't know that. Reality. So that's stuff that's outside of you. That's just like the environment. And your beliefs.
They all create beliefs. Hmm. What about experiences in general? This experience that be the present moment. The amount of stimulation that can be taken in and made sense of in the present moment determines awareness. Constant filtering of stimulus through compounded perceptions of experience feelings in the present moment. Constant filtering of stimulus. What is a belief? <clears throat> Definition An acceptance that someone exists or is true, especially with one without proof. <laughs> no. A belief is a subjective attitude that a proposition is true or state of affairs is the case. Ah. Exist. Okay, where's my system of truth? <laughs> my system of truth. Um, come with me. Truth. Beliefs. Believe what is true. That which is true is that which exists. Beliefs are interpretation of existence. Inter... In Interpretation. <laughs> Interp like this station of existence. It's kind of stored in it. 
in it like a, a sentence. <laughs> Interpretation of existence. Beliefs. Epistemology. True or false. True or false. Mm. So binary. No wonder our world is so binary if this is our foundation. <laughs> Sure, there are things that never existed, but objective reality, that's coming in there again. Things are either objectively true, and it's so, like, people talk about objective truth all the time. But when I ask them what it is, they, they can't, they can't say, they're just like, you know, the, you know, just like, what actually is? But we both can experience a version of reality that is true from our own perception, but simply because we're in occupying a different space in the universe, that means that our experiences will be slightly different, which means what's the truth? What's the true experience? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> Such a human way to look at life. Like, it either is or it is it. Like, so binary. I wonder when we're gonna move past this. Okay, but... Epistemology. Where's my chat TTP? There you are. Come here. Come here, tell me about this. I need to know. Explain epistemology. Epistemology is the branch of philosophy that deals with the study of knowledge, belief, and justification. It seeks to understand the nature of knowledge, how knowledge is acquired, what distinguishes justified belief from mere opinion or belief, the limit and the limits of human understanding. In essence, epistemology explores questions related to what we know, how we know it, and how we can be confident in our knowledge. The key concepts and topics within epistemology include knowledge. Epistemology seeks to define what constitutes knowledge. In general, knowledge is often defined or justified true belief. This is so crazy that a bunch of people, like philosophers, laid the foundation of how we see reality. Like, it's so powerful. <laughs> Because this is what people think. This is how people think. So fascinating. However, philosophers have debated the precise nature of knowledge and the conditions necessary for something to count as knowledge. Yeah, tell me more. I want to know... How? Okay. Belief. Belief is a fundamental concept in epistemology. It refers to the mental states of accepting something as true or accepting a proposition. Epistemologists explore questions related to the nature of belief, its formation, and how beliefs are justified or warranted. Justification. Justification refers to the reason or evidence that supports a belief. Epistemologists explain how beliefs are justified, what makes a belief rational or reasonable, and whether there are objective standards for justification. Truth. Truth is another central concept in epistemology. Knowledge is typically seen as requiring true beliefs, but determining what is true can be challenging. Epistemology addresses questions about the nature of truth, how we can know something is true, and whether there are objective truths or if truth is relative. Hmm... Relative absolutivity. That would be, I guess that's what people mean by objective. Absolute objective. 
everything absolutely exists all the time. But when will it exist? How will it exist? How will it change within the fluctuation of all the overlapping systems? That's relativity, and we can predict these things. Which means that there's underlying truths, underlying systems that generates an output. And that's, that's where we get to. <laughs> where is my systems? System, system, systems. Close system, open system. Where did I put that? I think I need to organize my stuff again. I don't know what I did with system, system of systems. Ah. Open system, closed system, underlying systems that generates an out output. This would be the present moment over here. One, two, oh. Shoo, hey? Look at all my stuff together, the void. Beliefs. Truth. Truth is another central concept in epistemology. I already did that. Uh, skepticism. Skepticism is a philosophical position that questions the possibility of knowledge or reliability of our beliefs. Epistemologists explore various forms of skepticism, such as skepticism about the external world or skepticism about the reliability of our senses, and examine responses to these challenges. Empiricism and rationalism. <laughs> rationalism. Epistemology often considers two major approaches to acquiring knowledge. E Empiricism emphasizes the role of sensory experience and observation as the primary source of knowledge. Rationalism, on the other hand, emphasizes reason and innate ideas as sources of knowledge. Epistemologists examine the strengths and weaknesses of these approaches. Interesting. Reliabilism and virtue. Epistemology. These are contemporary approaches to epistemology that focus on the reliability of cognitive processes and character traits or intellectual virtues of the knower. They explore, they, they explore questions about the conditions under which beliefs are justified or knowledge is obtained. The Gettier Problems The Gettier Problems is a famous challenge in epistemology that involves cases where someone has justified a true belief but does not seem to have the knowledge due to certain unexpected circumstances. It has led to debates about traditional definition of knowledge. 
Epistemology is the diverse and evolving field that addresses fundamental questions about the nature of knowledge and how we can come to the world, know the world. It is it has practical implications in various areas, including science, ethics, and education, as it informs how we assess the reliability of information, make decisions, and evaluate the validity of beliefs and claims. Epistemology just continue to explore these questions and develop new theories to better understand the nature of knowledge and belief. Am I an epistemologist? <laughs> Is this what I am? Have I finally found what I am? Maybe. It's definitely... There's a lot of overlapping things in that. Oh. Where's my... About my ideas. Interesting. And then beliefs drive behavior. Don't know about the order of this. I need to think about it more. Well, I guess we just explored the biology and epistemology, apparently. <sighs> yeah. All right. Thanks for watching the void. Sorry about the dog. I hope you have a nice day going forward. Remember not to be too hard on yourself. Remember it's not your fault to try your best. I know you're trying your best. It's a bad order limited. So yeah, take it easy. Thanks for watching. Bye.